Okay. Now, let's see the generation of QV curve with this system that is shown. It has a reference bus having voltage V1 angle 0 degree, then connected to a transmission line and a receiving end bus having voltage V2 angle theta. To this bus, we have a reactive power injection device or a reactive power compensation device connected. So based on the reactive power requirement from the load side, it injects reactive power. This device injects reactive power. Now from the receiving end bus, there is a transformer and it's connected to a load. And the active and reactive power consumed by the load or the active and reactive power demand of the load is represented by P2 and Q2. Now we have several loading range or loading ranges for uh, this particular case study. 1300, 1500, 1700 and 1900 megawatts for this particular load. And the power factor is assumed to be unity. So whenever this voltage goes down because of the consumption of more reactive power from the load side. Accordingly, Q is injected. Increased injection of reactive power happens from the reactive power compensation device connected here. So let's see the analysis. In this analysis, we have the QV curve drawn where the vertical axis represents the injected reactive power in MVAR and the horizontal axis represents the receiving end voltage V2 in per unit. So we have here different curves for different uh, loading levels, 1300 megawatts, 1500, 1700 and 1900 megawatts. Now the dotted characteristic here shows the characteristic of the capacitor or the or the reactive power compensation device and the solid characteristic here shows the characteristics of the system, the QV characteristic of the system. Now, let's see the, let's analyze each cara, each uh, characteristic with respect to the loading levels. Let's start with the 1300 megawatts loading level. You can see here the slope of the QV characteristic of the system, which is the solid curve. This is more when compared to the slope of the capacitor characteristic, the QV characteristic of the capacitor. On the other hand, I mean, at the, at the intersection point A, this happens, right? The slope is more for the system. System in the sense load characteristic, basically, because uh, the QV relation the, or the QV sensitivity of the load uh, gives you this characteristic because the load is at the receiving end, right? So according to the increase in load, we have increase in reactive power demand and how that is related to the receiving end voltage. Based on that only, we get this solid care for the system. So on the right side of these solid characteristics, we have slope of the uh, system characteristic more than the capacitor characteristic. And this is considered to be a stable point. That is the QV sensitivity is positive in this region and the QV sensitivity is negative on the left side of the curves. Now, what happens if this QV sensitivity is positive? That is why we call it as a stable point and also because of the relative slopes uh, uh, between the characteristic of the capacitor and the characteristic of the system. If we have a reduction in reactive power demand or or if we have a uh, reduction in reactive power injection accordingly the voltage reduction is voltage reduction of the system 
is governed by this solid kara but what happens when the capacitor comes into picture is that if there is a reduction in reactive power injection the voltage reduction is like this right or vice versa if the voltage reduces accordingly the reactive power injection is also changed so this has a lower sensitivity or or a lighter sensitivity this characteristic this has a has a heavier sensitivity now when you move up what happens here is at a higher load range at 1900 before 1900 we reach this 1700 megawatts um, loading where it is almost tangent with the system kara the, the capacitor characteristic is almost tangent to the system characteristic that means at the intersection point the slope is same almost same but when you move up again the loading level is still increased when the loading level is still increased what happens is the capacitor characteristic the slope of the capacitor characteristic is more when compared to the slope of the loading characteristic this is an unstable point but these are stable points now to the left side as i told you the allowable range is always marked on the right side and not on the left side because here we have negative qv sensitivity or the slope of the solid line is negative so we don't keep it here these are considered as unstable operating points so the capacitor because because why we are using a capacitor the the use of capacitor is such that when the voltage is low we have to inject more reactive power or when the voltage is low that means the system has more reactive power demand and the existing reactive power in the system is not sufficient this relation is valid only for the right side of the curves as there is a positive sensitivity between q and v and this is not valid for the left side of the curves so that is why we go for the this operating region the operating region is considered as this one now what happens if the capacitor is replaced by an svc so for an svc the the vertical dotted line shown here is the regulating range now for this range for this uh, regulating characteristic you can see that when the load level is increased the intersection point is also changed intersection point on the system characteristic is changed for this one it is more of uh, uh, what on the right side after the trough right after the trough it is more on the right side now when it reaches the 1700 level it's near to the trough right this intersection point is near to the trough so svc is capable of regulating the reactive power range according to the active power loading on the receiving end bus so this happens but the problem here is when it hits its regulating limit the maximum reactive power compensation limit for the svc if that is already hit that is what happens at higher loading conditions that is what happens in p2 equals 1900 megawatts so when it when it is hit hitting the limit then it acts as a simple capacitor simple capacitor in the sense for the simple capacitor the characteristic was this one not the vertical line this one the dotted line the dotted curve or dotted line so that is why here both intersect at the same point the svc characteristic and the and the capacitor characteristic intersect now it complete it is go completely governed by the voltage reactive power uh, relation is completely governed by this characteristic once it hits the limit okay now so uh, basically the 
uh, slope of capacitor kara and the system kara should be compared and based on that we uh, decide whether it's a stable point or, or an unstable point okay now uh, we will move on to the analysis of voltage collapse a typical scenario of voltage collapse can happen uh, because of heavily loaded system because when the system is already heavily loaded that means more current is passing through the flowing through the lines and i square x uh, loss is more and i into x voltage drop is also more so already the voltage is uh, voltages at the bus at the receiving end buses are vulnerable so the system is prone to voltage collapse now the second one is a contingency a case of contingency where a loss of heavily loaded line happens in that case if we have multiple lines running parallel from a sending end bus to a receiving end bus and if one of the lines is tripped which means the equivalent transfer reactance is increased when the equivalent transfer reactance increases the i into x transfer i into x transfer that drop voltage drop increases and i squared into x transfer reactive power loss in the line also increases so because of the voltage dip and the increased reactive power consumption by the system more reactive power has to be compensated to the system so this is also a case of uh, uh, case in which it is prone to voltage collapse now in the third case we have operation of ultc in substation transformers which we have already seen how cumulatively the effect of ultc um, i mean the the how ultc affects the voltage profile now generators reaching the field current limit whenever there is a voltage dip and if it is sensed by the generator terminal it's it is if it is sensed from the generator terminal voltage then automatically the avr will take the responsibility or avr will act and the field current would be increased for or the excitation current is increased for increased reactive power delivery but when the field current limits are hit based on the heating limit of the winding then the generator has no role in compensating the reactive power so other controllers should come into picture they should take the responsibility in this case also when the generators are helpless um, for a for these voltage drops uh, when the voltage drop happens in this case also the system is prone to voltage collapse now reduced effectiveness of shunt capacitors which we have already seen when the capacitor also hits the reactive power compensation limit then uh, again uh, the system is prone to voltage collapse so these cases these scenarios may lead to voltage instability or voltage collapse now voltage stability is classified into two types one is large disturbance voltage stability and the second one is small disturbance voltage stability for large disturbance voltage stability you know that around the operating point if there is a large disturbance we will not be able to linearize around the operating point so it needs non linear models to analyze large disturbance voltage stability for small disturbance voltage stability it happens because of gradual changes in load and the uh, here load change itself is considered as a disturbance but it's a small disturbance so uh, we can linearize around the operating point and go for linear models to analyze now we need to analyze the analyze voltage we need to model the devices in detail to analyze the voltage stability and the voltage stability analysis involves examination of two aspects the first one is proximity to voltage instability 
how close is the system to voltage instability or what is the stability margin of the system as of now which means we have already seen the pv curve in one of our lectures and we have a nose point on the right side which is known as the voltage collapse point or the voltage instability point um so we know that how much can be the how much can the power transfer the active power transfer increase it it can be increased to reach the voltage instability point so basically we get the proximity we should we should be aware of uh, of the proximity to the voltage instability point now the second one is mechanism of voltage instability which means the causes of voltage instability how does it occur where is the source of this key factors contributing then the weak areas weak areas in the sense some buses will be very weak they are vulnerable to voltage uh, fluctuations and what measures could be taken to avoid this so these are the two aspects of uh, um, examination of uh, voltage stability now we'll see this example before that um, we'll just go through the state model how the voltage stability is analyzed in general the general structure of the system model for voltage stability analysis is similar to that for transient stability analysis the model comprising of a set of first order differential equations may be expressed in the following form this is the form x dot equals f of x v where x is the state vector and v is the bus voltage vector so this looks like a state space model because uh, this is a state vector so rate of change of state variables with respect to time this is represented by x dot so it looks like x dot equal equals ax but here we have the the state vector and the bus voltage vector so this is a differential equation because this is x dot right this should be analyzed along with a set of algebraic equations on current and voltage where current is equal to network admittance into voltage network admittance matrix into voltage y into v equals i but here whenever the underload tap changer or onload tap changer uh, acts in that case the network admittance will change because when n1 by n2 changes accordingly the windings uh, the 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 inductance is changing right the reactance is changing so accordingly the admittance is changed now uh, this is the current injection vector i is the current injection vector now this these equations the the set of algebraic equations with some of the differential equations are solved with a set of known initial conditions x not and v not the initial value of the state vector and the initial value of the bus voltage vector at that point only we give the disturbance to the system we assume that the disturbance comes into the system at this particular point with these initial conditions now we have this system for the case study three generators are there g1 g2 and g3 connected to buses 1 2 and 3 two loads are there connected to bus buses 8 and 11 and to bus 11 we have a an underload tap changer connected so based on the voltage fluctuations it will act now we have five parallel lines here connected from bus 6 to bus 7 and the contingency considered here is loss of one of the heavily loaded lines in these five lines among these lines one of the uh, lines is tripped or taken out so that is a contingency so based on that what is happening to the system system bus voltages and reactive power then g3 is the generator which can compensate reactive power by uh, field control 
So the reactive power delivered by the generators will also be analyzed for this particular contingency. Now let's see the figure. So initially we are analyzing the magnitude of burst 11 in per unit versus time in seconds. So we have considered here three different loading levels where the loading level one is the lightest loading level and loading level two is the heavier one and loading level three is the heaviest one. So let's start with loading level one and at this point we have this contingency of uh, tripping of one of the lines, one of the five lines. So here you can see a dip in voltage profile for bus 11. Bus 11 is the farthest bus here, which is connected to the ULTC and it has a load. So this is basically the end, the receiving end uh, bus. And uh, because of this loss of line, the equivalent reactance here increases and there is more reactive, uh, the reactive power loss in the transfer reactance from bus six to seven, when it increases, the I squared X loss also increases and the I X drop also increases. So that will affect the bus seven voltage profile and more reactive power requirement is there in the system now. So based on that, all these bus voltages would be affected. We'll see it, it, will, it will be affected in different ways, but it will be affected in general. So we see here bus 11. This is bus 11, right? Bus 11 voltage. So initially it dips because of the uh, contingency. When this happens, what happens to the field current of generator? We'll see here, field current of generator. The field current of loading level one, this is loading level one, the field current of generator increases. So more reactive power is supplied from the generator. Based on that, this voltage is restored to the, or it is brought back to the same level. And it continues like this, because this is the lightest loading level. In the next loading level, that is loading level two. Now before that, uh, we'll see the reactive power output also. The reactive power output in MVAR, that is also increasing, right? Reactive power output in MVAR for the machine. This is for generator three. So at load level one, no issues. After that, once it is compensated from the generator side, it is fine. This is because the field current has not hit its limits because the loading level is the lightest one. If the loading level is more, then more field current would be required to compensate the reactive power and improve the voltage profile. And once the generator hits the uh, field current limits, then further compensation of reactive power is not possible from the generator. And other means of reactive power compensation should be, um, uh, we have to look for other means of reactive power compensation. So we have an option of ULTC here in the system. So uh, it will take the responsibility that we'll see in load loading levels two and three. Now let's see what happens uh, for loading level two. In loading level two, initially we have this uh, dip in voltage because of the contingency. And after some time, the field current is increased and generator compensates the reactive power and hence the voltage profile is improved. It is brought back to the same level. But now the problem is, here you can see for load level two, the increase in field current, it is much higher than load level one, right? It, it hits the field current limit. When it hits the field current limit, after some time, what happens is the field current limiter uh, acts and further reactive power compensation is not possible and reactive power is limited to a particular level where the field current is, uh, I mean, to, to the extent of uh, to which the field current is accepted or allowed. So after that, uh, because of this reason, the ULTC will start acting. 
when the ultc starts acting here when it comes into action when the ultc acts the voltage reduces and the ultc acts and the n by n1 by n2 ratio is changed when n1 by n2 ratio is changed what happens is again the reactive power demanded by the load again increases and still it's uh, trying to change the tap setting and uh, bring back the voltage to the same level but what happens is each time when the tap setting is switched more reactive power is demanded by the receiving end bus and uh, the issue proliferates and finally what happens is the last switching happens here beyond that the ultc is not able to switch all its i think 16 taps are there all its uh, uh, 16 taps are tap switchings are over then now you see the voltage is here it's very low in the range of 0.87 so this is the present voltage profile so because of the action of uh, ultc it tried to switch again and again to improve the voltage profile but each time when it was switched the reactive power demand is further increased and because of that again it switched and this cumulative effect led to the reduced voltage profile at uh, i mean uh, the reduced voltage profile of 0.87 now what happens here for the field current here also the field current increases at loading level 2 but it hits the limit at this point the field current is reduced because the field current limiter uh, makes the field current reduce so because of that again the voltage dips when the voltage dipped the ultc came into action that is what happened now what about load level 3 in load level 3 initially itself one i mean the when the contingency happened when the loss of line because of the loss of line heavily loaded line the generator had to increase the field current by a very large amount it already exceeded the field current limit and the field current limiter made the uh, excitation reduce to this point this value so because of that anyway the ultc came into action but here itself at the loading level 3 what happened was because of this because of the action of ultc the voltage profile dipped to this point which is 0.85 it it tried all its tap switching positions and afterwards it settled down at when the switching stopped it settled down at this particular voltage level which is not even 0.85 i think it's some 0.84 or something so this is what happened with the voltage profile uh, for the action of ultc and the action of field current control now in the next lecture we will move on to static analysis where we will analyze voltage stability in a more quantitative manner with vq sensitivity analysis and qe modal analysis thank you